When we did the calculation, pushing the piano 12 feet instead of lifting it 3 feet, so we pushed it uh, four times as far, but only had to use one-fourth as much force, and we calculated the mechanical advantage is 12 over 3, the length over the height, which was 4. That's really what we call the ideal mechanical advantage. And by ideal, that means the mechanical advantage that this ramp would give us if everything were perfect. And by perfect, we mean no friction. In the real world, there's friction. And when you try to push something up the ramp, it's sliding and there's friction. And it takes some extra effort to overcome the friction. Even if you have wheels, there's still a little bit of friction. If you're rolling something up a ramp on wheels, the wheels can be very effective at helping you approach what we call the ideal mechanical advantage. But there's always going to have to be a little bit of extra force, even with wheels, to overcome the friction. And if there's not wheels, it can be um, a, a much larger effort required to overcome the friction. Another way to think about this is in terms of efficiency. A, an, a simple machine is never 100% efficient. And what that means is that the effort that we get out from the machine isn't quite equal to the effort we put in, ever, because there's always some energy lost, and that's usually due to friction. And we'll discuss um, efficiency again toward the end of the chapter. But just know that the mechanical advantage that we're calculating in these um, in these problems is the ideal mechanical advantage and in the real world we never quite get that good of a mechanical advantage